I came into Gal's room and I was like, oh my God. And Gal goes, are you online shopping too? The contrast. Gal was online shopping and I was raving about um, Donut Time's new Easter donut collection that they launched. I came here for cuddles. I ordered some books yesterday and they have just arrived so I thought I would unbox them um, on camera with you guys. I am really excited. They were, they're quite like pretty books and I can't remember what video it was in but like one of my latest videos I talked about how I really don't like hardbacks and why I'm trying to use my Kindle more because I'm essentially running out of space in my flat. With that being said, I think, I know that at least one of these is a hardback, but I think they're all hardbacks. So let's, let's have a look. But I like tore it open, but I haven't actually seen the books. So. Okay, it's a hardback. The first one is Hamilton and Me, an actor's journal by, by Giles Torreira. And um, Giles was the first actor to originate the role of Aaron Burr in Hamilton in the UK um, and my understanding of this book is that he went like his process of becoming Aaron Burr his preparation for the role was quite extensive he did a lot of research I think there are like journal entries in this book that he kept while he was doing his research oh and there are like photos as well that's nice um, but I was recommended this book um, by who, it was in someone's video on, oh, Carrie Hope Fletcher um, recommended this book to anyone that's kind of interested or fascinated by the process that actors go through when undertaking a role. So the research that goes into it, into, you know, figuring out who this character is and, you know, really stepping into that person's shoes. So. I'm very excited to read this. I find that entire process really fascinating, so I'm excited about that. And then, oh, okay. So this is a book that I have been meaning to read for a really long time, and I've never actually read it. It's Emma by Jane Austen. And look how beautiful this copy is. Like, it's just such a beautiful book, and I, had not bought a copy, I don't have a copy of Emma because it was, you know, the, the Penguin classics, the paperbacks where the pages feel really like, you know, when you're in school and you're like learning how to write and you have tracing paper, that's what those pages remind me of, like the paper they use is just really like thin and flimsy. And I wanted to have a really beautiful copy of this and this just looks stunning. Oh, I'm so happy with this. But one of my friends actually recommended Emma to me. I've never read it. I have seen the film and I really loved the film. And I just think that Emma is, is just a really, really interesting character, particularly given the time period that the book is set in. So I'm really excited to read this. I am so happy with this copy. I get why people like hardbacks that look like this, because this is just such a beautiful book. Maybe I can get some more Austen novels in this sort of collection. This is so pretty. Okay. And the last one, I thought this would be, um, I thought this would be a paperback. It's not, it's a hardback. This is an interesting looking, it's very colorful, which I, which I love. Um, it's Pumpkin by Julie Murphy. And this is the same author that wrote a book called Dumplin, Dumplin. I, think, I don't think there's a G, which is why I'm saying it weird, um, which is also, I believe, a movie which is on Netflix um, starring Jennifer Aniston. And I don't know very much about this book. Um, I was told it was really fun, really interesting. So I'm excited to read this one. Um, but yeah, th those are the three new books that I have bought. I, st uh, I keep saying to myself, like, no more buying books until you you at least get through, I don't know, like 10 of the ones that you've bought recently and have yet to read, but I can't help myself. <laughs>
We are on our way to the Adams Family, which is playing in Churchill Theatre, which is in Bromley. It's my first time in Bromley, and it's taken us an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Yeah, but there's also been stupid traffic because the whole stuff with like the strikes, aftermath of the, the strikes. Um, but we're almost there. We are very, very hungry, so we're gonna try get some food um, before the show. But super excited. Are you excited? Who are you most excited to see, character-wise? Um, I said I was most excited. I'm really excited to see Uncle Festa, and I'm excited to see Gomez. Your turn. Is that a question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think me too. Um, same, same um, people. I was saying to Noor the I thing, right? The thing, the hand. The hand. I, do, I feel like they won't do it, but I feel like it's such a classic part of. Adam I feel family. like they can't not do it. I don't know how they would do it. But yeah. So hopefully we're gonna get there early enough that we can get some food. It's 6:26 now, and the show starts at 7:30. So like, fingers crossed, we'll miss that. We made it. We got sweet and sour chicken. Happy. <laughs> I'm so hungry. And we also got it's not even funny. some of these fried um, prawn, prawn tempura, tempura thingies. So I'm gonna golf this down. What are you drinking? J2O. And what am I drinking? Tea. Tea with? With real milk and sugar. I'm lactose intolerant, guys. <laughs>
just finished watching The Addams Family. It was so good, the music was amazing. We had a little bit of issues with some of the cast. Yeah. Um, and we shall not say negative things. We no. shall focus on positives. We will focus on the positives. Uncle it was Festa, so cute. It was Uncle so Festa. Good. Scott Page, who plays Uncle Festa, is hilarious. So, so cute. Gomez. Go so Cameron Blakely, who plays Gomez, is just such a perfect Gomez. And then I don't know what his name is. The like. Butler. The butler, the butler, yeah. who's like really quiet and doesn't say anything. He was just the best. He makes sounds. He's like, mm. he, no, he was just the best thing ever. Like the mannerisms, the and also he has, he has like a really, his his role is really awkward because he doesn't have any lines. He has sounds, and he like and he walks movements. across. Yeah, like movements, but like it takes him thirty seconds to walk across the stage, and no actors are saying anything during that time. So you have to like. Fill the silence. Yeah, you have to fill the silence and like be be in character so that the audience reacts the way that the audience is meant to react. And he did that so well. That and then so good. at the end during the bows, I don't I didn't get this on camera because I stopped recording. It's like but like once, he did he did this like little breaking, booty shake breaking of like the fourth wall like where he's like no longer in character. The yeah. thing is over and he just like you can see his actual personality, which is really like quirky. Yeah, but um, it was really good and a bit loud. The score was just, I thought the music oh, yeah. was brilliant. It was really good. It was really, really good. It was fun, it yeah. was fun. It was not, because I didn't I didn't know anything about the production before going, um, but it, was not, it wasn't what I was expecting. And, uh, and then again, I don't know what I was expecting, but it was super funny. Yeah, it was really very, good. Very entertaining. It was really good. If you can get out to go see the Adams Family musical tour, go and see it, it's really great. Gal says that this is me, now that I have a fringe, this is me when I pull back my fringe. <laughs> it's horrible. New muzzle. <laughs> look how cute his little face is. Look. Ew. Oh, okay, no. It's because he eats everything. Scavenger dog. <laughs> hello. Say hello. Good boy. Other one. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> hairdresser for four hours um this is the first time that i've really done anything to my hair like it's just this is like my fringe is the color of like my natural hair but i wanted to add some light to my hair <laughs> um it's really difficult i mean it looks a lot lighter a lot more red on camera um but I'm so happy with it. It looks quite natural and it's not too like out there, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. My hairdresser is freaking amazing. So if you are in London and you are looking for someone to cut your hair or color your hair, go see Daria at Tony and Guy. 
in Kensington. She is phenomenal. I cannot recommend her enough. She takes such care and just, I feel like she always over delivers. Like I'm always really nervous and I trust her blindly and we always chat at the beginning and I tell her what I want in terms of like my hair cut because I've never colored my hair. And she is the one that kind of encouraged me to get a fringe because I was like, I really want to get a fringe but I don't know how it will look and she's just, I just always leave so, so, so happy. She's incredible, so very exciting. But today was a lovely day. I saw my mum, um, I got to give Milo lots of cuddles and then I was at the hairdresser for a very long time. Um, and now we have a friend over and we are going to have pizza. We've already ordered pizza from Papa John's. And then I'm gonna go to bed early because tomorrow I have my solo with my musical theater beginners group. And this will be the first time that I've ever sang in front of people. Um, earlier this week, I sang in front of my sister for the first time ever as in like like sang a full song not just like we obviously like sing in the car and sing at home when we're cleaning and stuff but the first time she's heard me sing properly and week before the week before this week i sang in front of my singing teacher for the first ever time that was the first person i've ever really sung in front of at least as an adult because i used to do choir in, in school and like primary school so tomorrow will be the first time that I sing in front of 15 people and I'm really trying not to think about it too much because I think I'll get sick <laughs> with like anxiety and nerves. Um, I've practiced as much as I can and I'm just gonna go for it. It's really hard with singing though because if you're anxious and you're like tense that's gonna affect your voice and I just don't see how I'm not gonna be tense. The way that I'm telling myself I'm gonna get through it is Nor is not stepping on the stage, there's no stage, it's in the studio, but Nor is not stepping out to sing in front of 15 people. It's Eponine. <laughs> it's not me. I'm gonna get in character and I'm just gonna perform it. It's not gonna be me. So I'm gonna try and disassociate myself the song and the performance and hopefully that will make it less scary but we'll see <laughs> um i'm gonna go and sit with the rest of the group and eat some food and then hopefully i don't know maybe watch an episode of friends or read my book um and try not overthink and get myself riled up um I'm not really loving the book that I'm reading right now, I was reading it on the train home and Girl A, I feel like it's about to get really really good but I'm like 75% 75, 75 into the book and I'm still not hooked and I, I'm quite disappointed because I thought it was going to be one of those books that I just, my phone is going crazy, thought it was going to be one of those books that I wouldn't be able to put down but so far that hasn't been the case. So anyways, I'm gonna try get into that book later this evening. Um, but yeah, I will speak to you tomorrow. <laughs> was like no we're not going back to sleep we are staying awake so that's been fun um but yeah i'm like trying to do things this morning that relax me so hopefully i don't feel so anxious but i journaled kind of like stream of consciousness writing i just wrote what was in my head and then ended with some i look very pale today um and ended with some like positive affirmations like you know cheering myself on um i am going to head out in about half an hour um and head to the strand um and then walk to the theater from there i'm 
quite nervous. Um, I really, really hope that when I get there and I see everyone and we're all warming up together and then we're all gonna go like one by one and sing, um, I would ideally like to go first. Otherwise, I'm not gonna enjoy the day and I'm just gonna sit there like terrified and just thinking and comparing myself to other people. But if I go first, I have no one to compare myself to apart from myself and how I've been doing in like practice at home um so hopefully I can go first um yeah I don't know I like I'm gonna do it it's just terrifying <laughs> um on a positive note um you can kind of see more like you can kind of see my hair a little bit more um I'm really really happy with it I think it's come out better than what I could have hoped for, so I'm absolutely chuffed about that. Um, yeah, apart from that, I have nothing else to report. I um, don't know how much I'm going to film today, this morning, um, just because I think I'm going to be an anxious mess. Um, I haven't put any, like, any blush on my face or anything else, really, because when I get embarrassed or anxious or stressed, <laughs> I naturally go really pink so I was like I will be pink just right now I look very pale I also think it's the lighting but anyways I feel like I'm just waffling on and saying nothing of substance so I'm gonna go finish my tea get dressed like put shoes on jumper all that and then I'm gonna head out wish me luck <laughs> As usual, I'm very early. I'm half an hour early, so I've got myself a peppermint tea. I haven't had a coffee this morning because coffee can make you like can make you a bit phlegmy, and I was like, I don't need that right now. Um, but I took the bus to get here, and Jay, my sister's boyfriend, who we all live together, um, he took the same bus, but we left. The bus was was late, so I was there at the bus stop for like, I don't know, a few minutes. And then he showed up, so it was really nice because we just got to chat on the bus instead of me sitting there going through the song in my head and getting more nervous. Um, but yeah, it was it was a very nice um, bus journey and I'm just walking around Covent Garden. It is a very beautiful day um, in London. The sun is out and well, yeah, and it's not raining and it's been raining for the past few days so that's really lovely. I'm just having a bit of a walk around to try ease my nerves. Um, Jay gave me a bit of a pep talk which was quite lovely. Um, he's done like auditions in the past um, and yeah so that was that was helpful because um, I remember everyone's in the same boat like everyone's a beginner it's meant to be fun um, like no one's doing this professionally and it's not an audition, like everyone is cheering you on, <laughs> um, which is true. So yeah, um, I feel like I'm rambling now. <laughs> uh, I feel a little bit better. My stomach was an absolute knot about an hour ago. I feel a little bit better. I'm just waiting for this to cool down. Um, I'll have some of that. Um, it's quite cold and I'm wearing short sleeve t-shirt and a cardigan in this coat um, so I don't think I'm really dressed as appropriately as I should um, I've, also to I've also told myself that I'm going to get a donut time after my three hour session um, because they've come out with their Easter flavours and there is a mini egg one and it's pink so I was like that will be my little reward for pushing myself way out of my comfort zone doing this um, I also hope that Gal was saying the second you finish you're gonna be like oh, I wish I could do that again and I really hope that I feel that way so look how pretty this is <laughs> um, but yeah anyways I'm gonna head off now wish me luck <laughs> Garden market, and every time I'm here, 
I just think of the opening scene in My Fair Lady where um, they're coming out of the theatre, like all the kind of upper class coming out of the theatre and Eliza is there selling flowers and uh, like someone sits on her flowers or steps on her flowers and she's like, watch where you're going. <laughs> um, and that's, it's just there. Um, so every time I'm here, it just reminds me of that scene. I did it. Um, excuse my hair, it's really windy and wind and a fringe just don't go very well together. But I did it, I did it. It was my first time ever singing in front of people. Um, so I think it went as well as it could have. The only thing that I will say is like, my sister tried to prepare me. Oh, I've never done it, so I have nothing to compare it to. And I didn't know what my body would do when I got up there. But basically, I remember walking up, like, cause we were all kind of seated in like a semicircle. I remember walking up and then I don't remember anything until people started clapping and I looked at um, Roland and Tom who are our two tutors and I was like okay it's over I don't really remember like what happened um, I do know that like I got into I was able to get into character like the nerves didn't stop me from doing that the thing I do remember is that I got up there and my entire body was I'm not going to say shaking because I feel like that word doesn't do the experience justice vibrating vibrating I've never felt that in my entire life I was vibrating and I was like shit I do remember thinking oh my god this is going to come out in my voice but then I asked like other people in the group because I made that comment after and they were like no that didn't translate, we didn't hear that. And I was like, oh my God, that's great. Um, and I spoke to my sister after and she was like, yup, that's how it feels. So all in all, it was a very good experience. I'm very proud of myself for doing it. I've never done anything like that. And it's definitely out of my comfort zone. And I got really good feedback from people in the group, like new friends that I'm making and um, the two tutors as well, Roland and Tom. So I'm just, so happy um so yeah and it's a glorious day in london i've decided to walk a little um just because you never know living in london you never know what that's going to be like we've had a few we've had like a week of like constant rain and now look at that it's just amazing that's the royal courts of justice as well I'm really happy and I'm very proud of myself. I pushed myself out of my comfort zone and I did it. And I'm just so happy. I am back home now. I've been back home for a few hours. Um, and I have finished reading Girl A. Oh, I forget the name of the author. Um, Abigail, I'm gonna put her name here. Um, but I just finished reading Girl A and it took me a lot longer than I thought it would take because I had seen people on social media compare I'm also taking off my makeup so I'm gonna have to pin back my fringe and look really weird but I'm just gonna go with that um, I had seen people compare Girl A to the guest list and the silent patient which I know I have said on camera before um, but those that's kind of what I had as point of reference in terms of what that book was going to be like and I couldn't put down the silent patient and I couldn't put down the guest list either so I just thought that with girl a it was gonna be one of those books that I found really really hard to put down and that wasn't the case at all it took me I think over a week I think it took me over a week to read this book and I just could not get into it and like there were parts where they were quite gripping and I and I was like oh okay we're getting somewhere 
But then I was like, I just put the book down and kind of forgot about it and went about, you know, my life doing different things. And then, you know, either commuting or in the evening sitting down to read, picked the book back up and was like, what's going on? Where are we? What's happening? Like, I just, I, I didn't get into it at all. And I also thought that, I just thought the ending was just not a good ending at all. I thought the end of the book was very, very, very anticlimactic for me. Like I thought something horrific was going to happen at the end or there was going to be a big surprise or something. And it just ended really like, <sighs> the ending was just very mundane. Like I just didn't enjoy that book. I think I gave it a two star rating. Um, on Goodreads, maybe I was, maybe I gave it three, maybe I was being nice. Um, and I just found it difficult as well because I kind of alternated between audio. So I have it on Audible and I also have it on my Kindle and it's really nice because I only just recently discovered this, but your Kindle syncs up with Audible because they're both Amazon. So, they sync up with one another, which essentially means that if I'm on the bus and I can and I can't read on the bus, like sometimes it makes me feel really ill, but other times I'm okay. So if I'm on the bus and I'm listening to the audio, but then I get home and I wanna continue reading it on my Kindle, I'll only ever listen to audio if I'm out and about. <laughs> um, then I have the, you know, I can open up my Kindle and it will save, it will start my kindle like it'll start the book from wherever i left off on my on my audible which i thought was really really cool i this is the first time i've discovered this so that was good um i lost my train of thought now i lost my train of thought i honestly don't remember what i was gonna say but I just didn't enjoy this book, unfortunately, and I just feel like the last few books that I have picked up have not been spectacular, which is just really disappointing. Um, so the next one that I'm reading, I'm going to start it now, um, is, and I can actually show you, this is a great angle, no? <laughs> um, this one, You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. So that's the book that I'm going to start reading this evening. And my friend Cassidy is also reading it. Um, I think, she, to be fair, she might be finished with it because we said we were gonna start reading this book on Friday. Let me unpin this so that I don't look horrific. <laughs> um, we said we were gonna start reading it on Friday, but I was still reading Girl A. So that didn't happen. Um, so I'm gonna start reading it tonight. Um, but yeah, I, I just really hope that this book is good because I really do feel like, like I would love nothing more for this evening for me to just cuddle up with a good book, lovely cup of tea, and just not be able to put a book down until I force myself to put it down because I have to go to bed. Like I just love that so much. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's my update in terms of um, reading. I popped into Waterstones earlier today, um, the one in Covent Garden, um, to look for a book called The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. That's just come out and they didn't have it, which is a little bit annoying. It's just come out and Waterstones are carrying copied, copied? Signed copies by the author. Um, and the one, the Waterstones near me has it for sure because I walked past the other day and I stupidly didn't pick it up. So I think I'm gonna head there tomorrow morning. I have a jam packed morning tomorrow filled with meetings, but after that, maybe like when I take a break for lunch, head over there and get the book um, because that's another one that I want to have. It's part of my collection, it's another hardback. We're doing really well with not buying more physical copies of books and only buying paperbacks, we're doing really well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do that. It's been a lovely weekend. Um, I'm feeling very, I have I have a really bad headache. <laughs> but apart from that, it's been a lovely weekend. Um, Adam's family was amazing and it's just lovely to 
I usually go to see musicals on my own but it's really nice and sometimes I forget that like I actually do really enjoy going with people um, so that was really nice to like see that with two of my friends and my sister as well that was really enjoyable and I got my hair done which is in a ponytail so you can't even see it you can kind of see it there um, I've shown you many times throughout this vlog so we're good um, I got my hair done, I got to spend some time with my mum, not as much as, not nearly as much as I would have liked, but I think I'm going to see her tomorrow, which will be lovely. Got to squish my puppy, who I just miss so much. Milo is 10 years old. I call him a puppy, he's not. Um, but he's 10 years old and he is the light of my life. I love him so, so much. And I just got really frustrated this week because I, well, the last few weeks I just really haven't been able to spend very much time with him and for those of you that don't know we had probably like the scaredest that I one of the scaredest I've ever felt in my life um was a month and a half ago when Milo was taken into hospital doggy hospital and they had to perform emergency surgery on him and we almost lost him um so after that I just feel like I have to treasure every moment that I have with him and I haven't really been able to do that over the last few weeks because I've just been busy with work and life and I do wanna put him into my calendar and prioritize him more because he's not gonna be here forever and I just, I absolutely adore that little puppy. He's just the best thing in this world. So I definitely wanna make more time for him. And then today was, I, I, I feel like this is gonna come off as such an exaggeration, but this genu genuinely for me was one of the biggest moments of my life because I've never ever done anything like this. I have never, I never thought that I could get up and sing in front of people and feel good despite feeling terrified, but feel good and like right. Like this is something that I can do and this is something that I love doing and it feels right and the response was really lovely as well. Like I've never sung in front of people. So, I mean, I sang in front of my sister, I think I said earlier and my singing teacher who I've only seen twice. <laughs> but apart from that, no one's ever heard me sing. So to have other people say like, you have a lovely voice and you performed that really well. That was really, really lovely and just an added bonus to the whole experience, but I'm, said this earlier, I am very, very proud of myself because one of the things that I am determined to do from now moving forwards is to push myself out of my comfort zone and I signed up to this course knowing that this was something that I was going to be required to do and I did it anyways, even though it terrified me. So yeah, I'm just I'm just really happy with, with that. Um, and I'm meeting some lovely people in the group like our musical theatre course we've got 14 people um including myself and everyone is just so lovely and it's nice to be in a room with people that love musical theatre as much as I do and Roland who's one of the tutors I keep saying that I'm just gonna say their names Roland said there are things that we need to say and we need to express and we can't do that with just words we have to do it through music it's the only way and I think that's why I'm, that's one of the things that I love so much about musical theatre. It's, it's not really about, oh, you've got this incredible voice and you can belt these notes. Like, yes, professionally it is. Oh. But if you can connect to a song and you can, that's why I think I said on my Instagram, I'm going to go bear my soul to some people because I had to sing on my own, which is a very emotional, vulnerable song. And if you're going to perform that and connect with the music, connect with the lyrics, you are really, really vulnerable. And I'm really proud of myself because I thought that irrespective of what my voice did and irrespective of like the nerves and the shakiness, I felt like I gave that everything that I could in that moment. So I'm very proud of myself. Well done, Noor, you did well. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching this vlog if you've made it till the end. Um, and I hope you, whenever you're, if you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you next time.